commitment and sustained connection result in more than collaboration. It generates community and collective responsibility. The Jazz Aesthetic in Theater is the spatial, oral, linguistic embodiment of queer. The expression, <laughs> everything is everything. The expression of a self-naming that is consciously and insurgently liminal, unfixed. In queerness, non-normative eros is the norm. Morphing, shape-shifting, being fully present inside of one's sexual and political desires, in, in examining the competing and often contradictory definitions of queer, many define queer as a refusal to crystallize in any specific form. Queer then maintaining a relation of resistance to whatever constitutes the normal. Queerness is knowing, living, the permeability of reality markers. It is embracing the varieties of eros, regardless of what the specific practice might be, hetero, homo, or whatever. Queer is more about naming sites of possibility than naming a particular possibility. Queer foreground sexuality makes no pretense about the necessity of pleasure and places it in the middle of the conversation. Permits play and exploration to be the goal. Victor Turner's notion of liminality need not be conceptualized solely as not this and that, but more fruitfully this and that. Like queerness, liminality is the place of possibility in which people are not bound to the social structures but are given freedom to conceive, to imagine, to invent, to make. Liminality is the space of improvisation. It is the break using Fred Moten's idea of the same concept. Invention within a prescribed structure, the making of something that did not exist before. Are you with me still? Is everything everything? Everything is. Everything, everything is. Everything. There you go. Jazz, liminality, and queer enact similar transgressive strategies. Moving from mimesis, imitation that can lead to stasis and maintenance of the, st of the status quo, to poesis, the literary imagination with emphasis on language, to kinesis, the forging, the sweating, the calloused hands that offer up the not known. Queer and jazz unabashedly revel in the will to traverse the new right now. They are active choices predicated on pleasure. Both erotic desire and improvisation come from the same drive. And herein lies the danger and the threat. <laughs> Queer places desire, process now of all kinds above procreation, product, result. And in the liminal present, all things are possible. Everything is, oh y'all, everything is, okay. Queer allows the space. I'm gonna get back to Yoruba, I promise, I promise. <laughs> Queer and Yoruba are gonna come together in just a moment. Queer allows the space for identity to tussle with itself rather than wear socially prescribed identities. Queer, like jazz, crosses borders, borrows, samples, so that the recognizable must be seen anew. Ultimately, a new something exists. This is not a binary world, but is a fertile, multi-temporaneous one. It is dancing in the intersection with the energy of all the directions coming to bear on that spot. Queer is integral to the work of Carlos, Jones, and Bridgeforth in that non-normative sexualities and gender constructions are ever present. Carlos's characters frequently resist standard notions of the female explicitly challenging gendered norms and expectations. Jones's Book of Daniel regularly includes discussions about his distinctive racial, gendered, and sexual identities, and Bridgeforth is known for creating queer as the sexual, gendered backdrop against which everything else takes place. For these artists, then, queer is the everyday as their understanding of blackness encompasses transgressive sexualities and gender construction. I'm 
Back to Yoruba now. In the Ifa divination system of Yoruba-based spiritual tradition, an opuele or divining chain is often used for spiritual consultations. Each side of the chain has a story vibration lesson. These sides could be understood as a binary system, each side bringing its own history. When the two sides of the chain are revealed after a diviner's toss, they actually create something new. No longer a binary existence, but a truth that is the union of each side. This Yoruba-based divination system is not this or that, but quite powerfully this and that. Art, arrows, and spirit are sourced from the same river of liminal possibilities. In spite of queer theory's association with a radical liberationist agenda, as some would call it, queer theory has suffered from the same racial myopia that once plagued feminist theory. What E. Patrick Johnson and Mae Henderson call the totalization and homogenization of queer theory. I follow the political move made by many black feminist scholars who, in naming the particularities of their feminist agenda and practice, retained the potent, though, white term feminism and refashioned the term with the, ins in with the insertion of black as the critical modifier. Likewise, I retain the potentially insurgent term queer and following Johnson, Henderson, Juanima Lubiano, Bryant Alexander, amongst others, I add black as the animating force that retrieves queer from a stifling privileged whiteness. Black itself is queer. I'll see if anybody's gonna say everything is everything after that. <laughs> okay? Everything is everything. Oh, no. Everything's everything. Everything is. Okay. Black itself is queer. And that self generated notions of blackness and gender are counter hegemonic. I wanna say that again because it's very important to me. Black itself is queer in that self generated notions of blackness and gender are counter-hegemonic. After all, Aunt Jemima, the brute Negro, and Jezebel are not black constructions, but convenient white distortions of a black spirit of survival. Aunt Jemima is a mangling of Yamaya, the Yoruba divinity of motherhood and the cresting of the ocean. The brute Negro is the fear of Shango's maleness. Shango is the, divi the divine force of vitality and electricity. And Jezebel, Jezebel, <laughs> is the opportunistic misunderstanding of Oshun's sensuality. Oshun is the divinity charged with the sensory perpetuation of culture. Our very sense of what it means to be our black folks' very sense of what it means to fully be rests outside of white definitions and therefore outside of the structures the mainstream has used to encapsulate us. True black, blue black as concept, not color, is queer. The confluence of racialized, gendered, and sexualized realities become, as E. Patrick Johnson's grandmother would say, queer. By employing queer in this way, I run the risk of erasing the profound, politicized embodiment of sexuality. Specifically, criminalized, pathologized, and ostracized sexuality. If jazz is queer, and black is queer, and even the joined sides of a divining chain might be queer in their commitment to making a truth in the now, then how are gay, lesbian, bisexual, and transgender lives to be understood as distinctive queer reality? By utilizing the idea of queer in these ways, my intent is to both amplify the transgressive nature of jazz, Yoruba-based spiritualities, and blackness, and encourage a deep consideration of how these realities have concealed rejected their gay, lesbian, bisexual, and transgender histories. Rather than erase the particularities of queer sexualities, I hope to encompass and extend them. Are you with me? Am I making sense to say, if I'm making sense to anybody, say everything is everything.
Okay, that was at least half. It sounded like at least half. I'm gonna keep going. All right, I'm gonna have another conversation. Oh to, everybody's like, why did I sit on the end? I should have sat in the middle. That would have been safe. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna sit right there. How's that? Okay, great. I have always been queer. Regardless of my sexual partners, I have always been queer. My identity living in a liminal space where many years ago straight men said, there's something different about you. And women just wondered with their eyebrows raised. I wasn't out overtly, but the truth of myself seeped through my walk, my gaze, my talk. The price of a clandestine daily life is a cramped, artistic, and spiritual life. As a performer, I would not cross the Lyman threshold into spirit magic, but held tight to excellent technique and a melodious voice. Likewise, I would not use my ashe, that ability to make things happen. I would not use my ashe, but instead adhere to fixed and static religious doctrine. To claim my ashe would mean to radically reorder the structures that had supported me. To live in the break on stage would mean living in the break in life. The two are inextricably bound. In performance, one allows a kind of exposure, the deepest visibility, letting one's stuff get some air. Not having practiced this present tense truth telling in life, I found it difficult to access it in performance. It was the difference between work that others deemed good as they often did, and work that took me closer to the divine with no concern for human assessment. Jazz aesthetics, as experienced through theater, challenge traditional Western theater making in general and black U.S. theater aesthetics in particular. Freedom is indeed the goal, as these artists have been relegated to the relative obscurity of avant-garde or experimental status. For these artists, such status leaves them invisible in the black theater world that resists the expansive blackness and queer realities that characterize much of their work. In an avant-garde context, the black aesthetics remain appropriated, fetishized idiosyncrasies, rather than historically rooted through the resistive, feminist, anti-racist paradigm that they employ. Carlos Jones and Bridgeforth represent an alternative genealogy for black theater. Taken together, they represent an array of jazz possibilities in art and in life, thereby providing audiences with a variety of approaches for a common goal, an invigorated sense of humanity through the rigors of art making. Or as Sekou Sandiata said simply in an interview, the goal is God. Everything is everything. Woo! Can I go? Can I travel in and out and through on the verge? Right there, right there, almost, it's peeking through. It's there, oh yes, almost here, almost here, but no. No. I stop. Almost, almost there, not quite, but maybe. It's lurking there, waiting for me to step up, for me and it to be one. Theatrical jazz has artistic impulses akin to Western theatrical avant-garde traditions, a particular kind of resistance to existing socio-political socio structures, an interactive relationship with the audience, a reimagining of what theater itself might be and do in the world. Indeed, the artists I examine have often found home place more comfortably in so-called experimental or avant-garde theater companies. A complicated position to occupy when black artists have rarely set the terms of what constitutes avant in Western art. Harry Elam speaks to this dilemma as he examines how white artists and scholars hold tight on defining what the avant-garde might be and who might participate. 
Fred Moten has discussed the complexities of a contemporary black avant-garde art, an art that challenges the unstated presumptions of both black art and a white-defined and white-dominated avant-garde art. Moten identifies freedom drive as the resistance to objectification and the essence of black performance. Freedom drive. While acknowledging that some black critics would not embrace the resistance fostered by the avant-garde at the expense of a distinctive and perhaps narrow reading of black aesthetics. This conundrum is all too real for the artists that I work with and that I am writing about, who have generally been produced by experimental venues, such as PS122, the Soho Rep in New York, Hillsbury House in Minneapolis, Lynx Hall in Chicago, Frontera at Hyde Park Theater right here in Austin, Texas. The black avant-garde instead dismantles and re-envisions the very notion of what theater might be. In this way, black theater benefits from both August Wilson and Sekou Sundiata, from Lorraine Hansberry and Robbie McCauley. For the artists featured in the book, blackness is a continual presence in their work, rarely revealed as theme or idea, but materially present as character or detail. Some audience witnesses might not recognize this brand of blackness because it lives inside the blue note. Any note that is bent, smeared, scraped, and is generally a half step away from the obvious note. 